for the Jaguars, um, they made a rare smart move in hiring Doug Peters and as their new head coach, um, upgrading from the controversial Urban Meyer um, in that very poor season in 2021. But and they made an upgrade to go and get Doug Peterson, an actual uh, experienced head coach who won a Super Bowl back in Philadelphia in the 2020, 2017 season in hopes of you know being the guy to to up to help trevor lawrence's development and certainly it did um it took some time uh, but uh, they made a late season push after a very poor start first half of the season but nonetheless they made a late season push as they also saw the titans um and the colts like suddenly suddenly like crash and burn and they took full advantage of that opportunity they won a couple of quality games, and including one to the Dallas Cowboys. And in week 18, they seized the moment, even though they didn't really play that well either. But they still seized the moment against the Tennessee Titans and clinched their first division title in a couple of years. And then in the playoffs, they came back from a 28, uh, yeah, 28, yeah, 28 to nothing deficit in the first half, and and actually won the game against the Chargers, and yeah, they came up short against the Kansas City Chiefs, uh, but, you know, that's what experience gets you. That's what inexperience gets you, but now they have that experience uh, of being in the playoffs against the eventual defending Super Bowl champions, and hopefully they will learn from that. So for the Jaguars, you know, they they finished their season 9-8, but they finished as the, def- as the reigning AFC South champions, and they made it as far as the divisional playoffs where nobody expected them to be at that point so for the jaguars and for trevor lawrence and for doug peterson you obviously want to make a deeper playoff run in 2023 looking at some of their um, offseason priorities that it had for them um you had to upgrade most of your defense because um it wasn't that great in in 2022 even when they were on that uh late season stretch there were some concerns that it had like you know the secondary um outside of a couple players it was not great. Um, they they had a hard time uh, covering opposing receivers. They gave up a lot of big plays, and yeah, the pass rush. You know they struggled at times too. And then they also had to retool the offensive line because uh, they also had a little bit of trouble uh, protecting Trevor Lawrence, and some of their offensive line members had a down year. So those were some of my priorities for the Jaguars um, if they wanted to have a chance to make a deeper playoff run. Uh, looking at some of their offseason events uh, for the Jacksonville Jaguars, um, they did get some big help back in the offense, uh, and that was receiver Calvin Ridley, who they traded for, I believe it was last offseason, uh, but he was suspended uh, for the whole season uh, last year uh, because he w- he was gambling on Falcons games when he was still a member of Atlanta during the 2021 season. So they had no Calvin Ridley uh, last year, but he'll ha- they'll have him this year. So he was reinstated by the NFL. And then they, unfortunately, though, that came with the loss uh, because left tackle, one of the key left tackles, Cam Robinson, he was suspended four games for violating the NFL's performance enhancing drug policy. So that's a big loss for their offensive line. And yikes, I don't, I hope they're going to be ready for that um, because without Cam Robinson, this offensive line is going to be kind of fucked. So, Looking at some of their offseason moves for the Jacksonville Jaguars, um, um, one, of the, one of the big losses that they incurred on the offensive line was losing Jawan Taylor to the Kansas City Chiefs. Um, yeah, it's not, not good. Um, they also lost Arden Key to the Tennessee Titans. I'm not sure why they let him go. Uh, and corner Shaq Griffin and receiver Marvin Jones, they, re- they released them. So, a little interesting there. Um, they did resign tight end Evan Ingram. He was on the franchise tag, but they came to a long-term deal. So, one of the key... Uh, key weapons in that offense late in the season for Trevor Lawrence. And then safety Andrew Wingard, uh, one of the solid defensive players for that Jaguar secondary. Uh, some of the auditions on free agency in the draft. Uh, run, backup running back Dearness Johnson from the Cleveland Browns, so he's replacing James Robinson um, to back up Travis Etienne. And then offensive tackle Josh Wells. Um, so I guess he'll be the re- replacement for Jawan Taylor. And then they added kicker Brandon McManus, uh, who was released by the Denver Broncos. So, I mean, not a pretty quiet 
a free agency for, for Jacksonville. Um, but I guess they were tight on money. So looking at the draft, though, um, they at least did the due diligence there, I guess. Um, but it looks a bit concerning, though. They they added a, a offensive tackle, which they ca- they did need, um, Anton, Anton Harrison. Um, and they also added a linebacker by the name of Ventral Miller from Florida and an edge rusher by the name of Tyler Lacey from o- Oklahoma State. And a swing offensive lineman by the name of Cooper Hodges from Appalachian State. So, well, they added Def in the offensive line. I just feel like, man, I hope, hope I hope, just hope that these pan out because, uh, yeah, I'm I'm not sure why they didn't trust the interior. Why didn't they go get after guards? Because the interior um, of that has currently has Brandon Sheriff and Ben Barch. They weren't exactly a wall, and it wasn't a wall that couldn't stay healthy either. Um, so the center, meanwhile, the center Luke Fortner, um, I just hope that he's ready to improve in year two. So th- that interior, I'm kind of concerned about for Trevor Lawrence because he didn't he got hit some sometimes, uh, but there's some there's definitely some concerns, especially considering that Cam Robinson is out with the suspension. And there isn't really a viable temporary option until unless you know Anton Harrison um, or Cooper Hodges suddenly like becomes the 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 great the greatest tackle ever. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Like they become viable, they become viable um, in the interim. And then the, my other takeaway for the Jaguars this offseason is like, why didn't they address the defense? Like like they didn't really address the defense that much. I mean, they addressed the, some part of the defensive line, but, like, why not the secondary? Because it was a clear reason why they lost so much to start the season last year and in the divisional game against the Chiefs. So it was very questionable, uh, or not, depending on your perspective, on why general manager Trent Balky didn't address the defense top-down, like, especially in the secondary. They needed corners uh, opposite Tyson Campbell because... The outside and slot spots, they were getting roasted repeatedly. Like, did you not see the game against Kansas City or the game against the Chargers when they were down 20 to nothing? Hmm. And then the pass rusher, the pass rushing positions, like I said, they added a couple deaf pieces, but yeah, they still need help. Like, they, they need a prayer that Trayvon Walker from last year. Um, and then last year's linebacker, uh, Devin Lloyd, they pan out because, you know, they had decent years, but they could certainly uh, pan out better. So looking at some of their potential games uh, for 2023, um, they go on the road to start the season to play if it's going to be Anthony Richardson and the kind of rebuilding Indianapolis Colts. But like I said, with the Colts, at least they're re- embracing the rebuild. But for the Jaguars, you can't uh, underestimate the Colts because they got in trouble for that last time. And then week two, you take on the Kansas City Chiefs and the defending Super Bowl champions. Um, yeah, you you have to play your A game against the, the Kansas City Chiefs in that divisional playoff rematch that this time around, the Jaguars are on their home turf. And then week five, you go you take on the Buffalo Bills in London. In what's going to be a back-to-back week uh, weeks for the Jaguars in London, which is kind of weird how they're doing that this time around, right away. Um, like they're hosting a London game and then they're the technical row team against the Bills in London. Kind of weird how they're doing that. I don't know. And then week 10, you host the San Francisco 49ers off both teams by weeks. So another big challenge there for uh, the Jaguars t- trying to take on the 49ers pass rush. And it's especially considering if the Jaguars offensive line is not good still by that point. And then... Week 11, you host the Tennessee Titans, um, you know, depending on how they are by that point. Maybe you can steal a win there um, or not, but we'll see. So some of my biggest questions uh, surrounding uh, the, the Jaguars this season, you know, are there any potential good surprises in that Jaguars defense? Is there going to be a good corner opposite Tyson Campbell? Is, the, is Trayvon Walker or Devin Lloyd going to break out in 2023? You're... Is Josh Allen, the linebacker, going to be the the breakout star? Is anyone going to be... Is there, is there going to be a big surprise? Like a good one 
for this Jaguars defense because for considering that they didn't uh they didn't like do any like major mo- major moves um they did add death pieces but it's like they should have done more they should have done more um in the offseason and if not you know can Trevor Lawrence in that offense make up for what was a pretty what could be a pretty bad defense uh I certainly hope so and I really hope the offensive line could uh can protect Trevor Lawrence especially with Cam Robinson out for four games but I do expect the Jaguars to win the AFC South because you know this division is still pretty weak um but it's only what they didn't do in this uh, this past offseason I don't expect them to make it past the divisional playoffs if they even get to that point um because the front office you know they didn't do their deal diligence uh to get them past that point they didn't like build them uh to you know get to an AFC championship game again um and yeah because of that well don't expect the the all elite Jacksonville Jaguars um if they do make the playoffs or if they even win the division I again I expect them to to make it past the, the divisional playoffs so you know I expect the, like an, uh, an improvement 11 and 6 maybe but like I said like three times now <laughs> I don't expect the Jaguars to um make make it very far in the playoffs if they do end up winning the division <laughs>